What makes Crosstalk effective and how has Crosstalk Global's ministry impacted the world? Join us for an in-depth interview with Crosstalk's Director of Educational Effectiveness, Dr. Alan Miller. Welcome to Crosstalk, a Christian podcast whose goal is for us to encourage each other to not only increase our knowledge of the Bible, but to take the next steps beyond information into transformation. Our goal is to bring the Bible to life into all our lives. I'm Nathan Norman. While Kent is teaching in Kenya this week, we take a break from the Book of Acts to explore the inner workings of Crosstalk Global with Dr. Alan Miller. Alan, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, Alan, help us to understand what is your role at Crosstalk Global? Well, I am in charge of all things education, which basically means that I have the privilege to take everything that is in Kent's mind and put it down on paper for the rest of us to uh, figure out how to teach effectively in our uh, different fields. Okay, so it's a translation job as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. One of my favorite stories is uh, we were in Myanmar, uh, year three, and Kent looked at us and said, what do you guys want to do today? And I said, you don't know? And he said, oh, we could do just about anything today. And I said, wow, I don't know that I could do that. <laughs> I think I need a little bit more preparation <laughs> than showing up and doing that. So I um, go through and I take the lectures that he's given, the lessons he's done, and try to put it on paper um, so the rest of us uh, mortal human beings can do what he does so well. Yeah, and it's been really helpful watching you do that over the years because I've been with Crosstalk I've, almost since the beginning, not quite, uh, but kind of looking at it in the first time I went out with Kent in, in Vietnam and we're kind of, fat, what are we going to do today? And let's do this, let's do that. And kind of fast and loose and being like, ah, very uh -huh. stressful. I mean, he's got years and years and years of experience, oh, so he yeah. can do that, right? The rest of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it was golden every time. It was like a great lesson for the students. And I just, my jaw would drop. How do you do this? Right. And absolutely <laughs> discouraging for us. Like, okay, I <laughs> right. go and do likewise, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. Right. Right. So he's, uh, He's brought me onto the team to prepare curriculum. And one of my favorite things to do is to um, to revise the curriculum after our teams get back and just ask them, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what can we do better next time? And then to put that on paper for the uh, next group of instructors, which has been really, really helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's it, it is. And like I was saying, it's really been great watching it come along even when we're doing the homework in between the yeah. rubric that that you developed to to grade these things and mm. I, I remember I was I was talking with Kent I think we were in Vietnam and he's yeah we got to come up with a better way to grade these things and more <laughs> more objective and I'm just but I'm That's looking right. at it and I'm like how can you possibly make all of this that objective and uh -huh. By golly, you got us all on a Zoom call and you showed us, yeah. okay, here's the rubric. And I'm like, that's actually really good. Anyway, it's, it's simple and it's, uh -huh. it, it's effective. And I'm like, okay, this, yeah, okay, this worked. You, you can objectively grade this. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Much more effective than sitting back and, and kind of, you know, what, what do I want to give this sermon? Is this a, a right. sermon? A B, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, that's been good. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly helpful. Uh, so, so let's back up a little bit and talk about what, overall, what does Crosstalk do when we go into a culture? What, is, what does it look like, our educational uh, system and philosophy? Well, as we go in, our chief goal is to help that culture hear God's voice, which is no small task. <laughs> <laughs> um, our goal is to help the local pastors to gain the skills and confidence they need to effectively communicate uh, well, first, understand, and then communicate God's Word. And so as we are landing in a brand new culture, we're both studying and learning as much as we can about them, as well as helping them to study and learn as much as they can about God's Word and the process of preaching God's Word. Oh, excellent. And so we do that over the course of, depends on the culture, but we'll have mm -hmm. six one-week cohorts where we meet in person, usually every six months. So we do it over the course of three years. And we train and train and train skills based training in between each cohort. We have homework for them to work through. Yep. And uh, and then at the end of the three years, we just bid them goodbye. Right. That's it. That's all we do. 
<laughs> oh, you know, if it was a normal academic institution, probably. But at Crosstalk, we make a long-term commitment to our students. So we want them to succeed, not just for the three years we see them, but to continue to gain skills. So we host um, alumni events where we're coming back together to fill in additional gaps that we couldn't cover in our three years, uh, additional topics that we didn't have time to get to, as well as continuing to train up the next generation of apprentices. You know, the guys on the ground who are going to be there to help Crosstalk flourish, to continue to um, propagate the gospel of Crosstalk, if you will, (laughs) um, helping uh, their fellow pastors and ministry leaders um, really grow in their ability to communicate God's big ideas. Yeah, because the end goal isn't that we continue to send North American instructors to teach them how to communicate in their culture, which we aren't a part of and never will be a part of. Uh, We the the goal is to empower them to then in turn empower uh, others so that they can hear God's voice in their own cultural language, in their own cultural system. Yes, and they will be much, much more effective than I can ever be. You know, when I go to India, I love being there to pass along the skills that I've learned, but I don't know Indian culture like they do. Um, And so if they can take those, you know, skills that we have um, have cultivated in them, they will unleash God's power to their people because they know the people uh, that they minister to. Yes. Oh, absolutely. A good example of that. When I was in Vietnam, we we wanted to come up with a bunch of, this was back in the day before we had a a well thought out curriculum. We, We needed to come up with a bunch of uh, stories, mini stories for them to then turn around and come up with a big idea for the mini story. And so Ken said, all right, Nathan, you've been here for, you know, three days, you know, <laughs> make, 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 you know, make some stories that they can put together some big ideas for and have the answers like, okay. Mm-hmm. And so one of the stories I remember it, it had something to do with a woman was selling flowers on the corner of the street uh, to yes. try and make money for her family. Right. It's just so simple. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> And everyone was quiet. No one wanted to answer or come up with a big idea, which would be pretty simple. Why is the woman selling flowers on the side of the street to uh, to support her family? But they said there was a connotation to the way we worded it or whatever uh, about like some I don't I don't even know. There was some sort of sexual connotation to what what we were saying. And it was and like, you never know. You never no, would have guessed. No clue. No clue. They're all giving me these awkward looks and I'm like, what? I, yeah. I don't get it. Is yeah. there something on my face? I, yeah. <laughs> it's so confusing. And fortunately, our right. translator was able to step in. But Yes, thank goodness. But yeah, those things where yeah. they they can communicate God's word better than, than we can. They can translate God's word better in their own culture than we can. Absolutely. And it's uh, a lot easier for them to gain these skills of, of interpreting and communicating the Bible than for us to gain the skill of exegeting the whole culture. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well said. So, okay. So let's go back even further. This is really bad okay. interview skills and it's even worse <laughs> storytelling. I don't know if you've ever seen a movie where they have a flashback and then within the flashback, there's another flashback. Yes. I mean, that's just yes. horrendously bad storytelling. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right now. So let's go all the way back to the, be- the very beginning. No, but uh, wait, how did you meet Kent? Well, I met Kent by accident. So I uh, had come to Talbot to get my THM in New Testament. And when I came, they told me that I needed to take a preaching class uh, because in my master's program up at Western, I had tried to avoid as many pastoral classes as I could. And they let me go without preaching. And so when I came to Talbot, they said, (laughs) you have to take a preaching class. I tried to fight it and argue that, of course, I won't touch preaching. I promise, I, you know, I, I promise I won't do any preaching. Just let me have a class. They didn't. And I ended up in Kent's class. Oh, wow. And so I, I, I still remember very vividly sitting there thinking, you know, as a young 20-something arrogant Bible student that I knew better than this preacher. What can this preacher mm-hmm. teach me about the Bible? I mean, I know Greek. I know Hebrew. I know theology. Like, what does he have to offer? And in five minutes, he changed my entire, the entire course of my life. Uh, because he asked me, what's the point of Jonah? And I thought I knew. I mean, I translated it. I'd gone through all of uh, my whole academic training had led me to say, this is the point. And he says, you forgot chapter four. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and instantly I realized, wait a minute, what's the point? And my fellow classmates, they didn't get it. The next guy didn't get it. And as he preached through Jonah, he put all the pieces together in a way that I had never seen happen. Hmm. And I said, I want to do that. So from there, I followed around um, for the last decade or so, just trying to uh, 
to do, um, to put the Bible back together in a meaningful, consistent, coherent, accurate way. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's really, I, I think he's softened a little bit, at least when we're with crosstalk, but man, at Talbot, he's just brutal. Where it's just like, he, yeah. you talk about raising need. He just shows you how ignorant you are. And, yes. and yeah. you're just like, oh, yeah. I know nothing. Uh, That's which was probably, you know, probably pretty appropriate for me. You know, I don't know, at least the class that I graduated out of, there could tend to be a little bit of arrogance in the class. And for him to come alongside and kind of nudge us and say, yeah, you've got something to learn here. Right. You don't know everything. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was, it was so powerful. It was so powerful uh, moment in my life. Yeah. Paul says uh, knowledge puffs up and mm-hmm. then Kent comes along to deflate. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. And what, a, you know, just in that moment, realizing that I had all the skills that I needed to deconstruct the Bible and take it apart piece by piece, mm. but I had not yet learned how to put it all back together in a way uh, that anyone could understand, even myself, that I could understand clearly what is the point of this book or passage or wow. the whole Bible. Yeah, and how do you how do you translate it to the people you're talking to? Right, right, right. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. You got to exegete your your text, but you also have to exegete your congregation. Mm-hmm. Good, good. So, okay, so you you met Kent. You were. You saw your deficiency in preaching, <laughs> yes. as we all did, and uh-huh. uh, and then uh, and then you follow him around and continue to maintain relationship, learning from him. So, how did you get in- yeah. involved with crosstalk? Well, from my master's degree, I um, followed him into the D Men program. I became his TA. We planted a church together, and quite naturally, he said, "When you're done with your dissertation, I want you to come on at crosstalk." And so that was a no brainer for me mm. to be able to take all the things that I had learned, all of these skills that had been so transformative in my own life and give them away to the world was just a no-brainer. Absolutely, I wanted to do that. We're all much more enriched uh, for for you having done so and answered that call. How long ago was that? 2015. So I finished my um, dissertation in 2015. And I think, well, maybe it was uh, a year or two after the exact date escapes me. But after I had finished my dissertation and was well settled in the church that I was at, um, he came alongside and said, would you join us? And um, I said, absolutely. So now, in addition to Crosstalk, you also minister elsewhere? Yes. Um, So I am a part-time pastor at a local church here in Bellflower, California. And I find that I get the best of both worlds. Um, Hmm. because as I put things on paper for what I want the students to do overseas, I have to ask myself, can I do that? (laughs) Is that Hmm. realistic? Does that work? And does it translate to ordinary folks like the ones that are in my congregation? And so it really keeps my, keeps me planted, keeps my feet on the ground when it comes to, uh, designing our curriculum at Crosstalk. Yeah. That I, when I was going through seminary, I was also a youth pastor, up in Santa Clarita Valley. And I found that it was really hard because you said, I'm a part-time pastor. There's no part-time pastor. You're just paid (laughs) part-time. That's true. true. (laughs) They're just not paying you full-time. That's all that that is. Uh, But uh, I, yeah, so it was like full-time, you know, pastoring work and and full-time student. And it was incredibly stressful, but it was incredibly helpful because I could almost immediately in class tell this is theoretical drivel that will never work in the real world. Right. Right. Uh, Versus this. I need to listen to this because this is incredibly helpful. I, I need this more than, uh, more than anything. Absolutely. Uh, And so that's what, where you're at right now is, is Mm -hmm. working on the educational system of crosstalk. You're not in an ivory tower detached from ministry. You're actively doing ministry and you're saying this this will this would never work in the real world uh-huh. uh so yeah. i i gotta yeah. keep it grounded uh-huh that's that's been so critical over these last few years yeah so what's the what what's the impact of big idea preaching been in your ministry boy well so much i would say for me personally the impact has been that i've been able to hear god's voice in a fresh way you know, some of these stories that I grew up uh, learning about in children's church and Sunday school and even, you know, in regular uh, weekly Sunday ministry, to go back and really look at the text and say, what does it actually say? What is the point actually here? 
And when you have a text that you've known for so long that isn't quite the way that God intended it, and you find that big idea afresh, I mean, it's just such an exciting moment yeah. to hear God speak so clearly. Um, mm. I know in my congregation, the same thing. When they hear a text preached clearly, consistently, when all the pieces come together and fit together, and they say, man, I never experienced this text like that before. I've never read it in its fullness before. That That's just such an exciting thing. And to see them take that idea, go home, med- meditate on it, pray over it, and put it into practice in their lives, that it's it's been life-changing for me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's incredible. And be, be able to watch it not only change yourself, because it does. I've often mm-hmm. said, man, you know, it's, it's a blessing because I can never get away from God. But there's yeah. times where I'm like, man, I'm frustrated with what you're doing in my life right now. I wish I could get away. Yes. Well, <laughs> Sunday's coming, so I guess I can't. We got to work this out, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so it transforms me, but but seeing how it transforms the congregation over time, it, it's there's nothing else like it to actually see right. that transformation. And you know that transformations happen when you're at a, a meeting of some sort and you suggest we do something and someone quotes a sermon back to you. Yes. And, yes. and they're like, well, that's not what we should do according to Matthew, whatever. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, well, all right, Lord, I'm listening because it was your idea in the first place. It wasn't mine. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Those are great moments. I, I would say the other thing that's um, been life-changing about um, the method that we use at Crosstalk is that it's given me the confidence to preach the whole Bible. Mm. Right now, we're getting ready to start a series on Chronicles, and I've never heard a sermon series on Chronicles. In fact, I don't know that I've ever heard a whole sermon uh, from the book of Chronicles. And, you know, back several years ago, if I had looked, and you've got nine chapters of genealogy that starts saying, if I look at that, I'm saying, you know, do I want to preach this book? Or do I want to go to Philippians or Ephesians or something that I know well? And yet, because of crosstalk, I can look at it and say, no, this is absolutely vital to our spiritual health. Let me dig into it with fresh ways. And so it's given me the confidence to go places that uh, I couldn't have gone before. Yeah, absolutely. I I remember I preached, I think it was, yeah, it was Matthew. And as I'm looking at the genealogy there, it's like, yeah. you know, a genealogy. I'm like, oh, I got to preach yeah. a genealogy, right? <laughs> but right. I, and I knew like ancient Near East cultures, genealogies mean something. This is your heritage. This is, you know, right. they get right. excited about it. It's like, I don't know. It's like mm-hmm. my my wife, if I listen to heavy metal, she's like, no, I, I'm not interested in that, right? That's how we are with genealogies. But someone yeah. somewhere is interested in genealogies, just like there's people interested in heavy metal music. And, uh, uh, but they loved it. And, and how do I yeah. bring that out? And I think the tools with Crosstalk, I'm reading through it and Matthew keeps putting in these details about uh, the flaws of these people, you know, Rahab, the prostitute and uh, and David, you know, who married Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. So, so it's pointing out, yeah, David is an abuser and a murderer. Right. And, And as I'm looking at this genealogy, it's really highlighting all the negative traits of people. And so I finally came up with this big idea, if I remember correctly, of um, who who does God want? Who did God choose to be in his family, right? We don't get to choose who's in our family, but, but God, to prepare the way for the Messiah, he did get to choose who would be in the genealogy of the line of Jesus. And who does he choose, right? He chooses Abraham, who, who, for lack of a better term, pimped out his wife or tried to twice, <laughs> twice. Right? Yeah. Do, you, do you want to sit next to your brother-in-law who tried to sell your sister, uh, you know, at Thanksgiving meal? No. Right. Uh, you have David, you, you have uh, Bathsheba, you have all, or not Bathsheba. You have, um, um, you have uh, uh, David who, uh, who committed uh, this murder and, and mm-hmm. on and on it goes. Who does God choose? He chooses, he chose flawed individuals like you and me yeah and he and he continues to choose them he continues to choose us sinners to be adopted into his family right so that's that's where i went with that and it it worked and people were like man i saw his genealogy i almost skipped sunday i had one guy later on he says you know i didn't come last week because i knew it was the genealogy yeah yeah there's nothing there for me you know let's get to the good stuff right right and but it is the good stuff and i wouldn't have i never would have seen it without this idea of big idea preaching right and uh and understand right. what it meant to them. And then how do we translate that into today? 
Right. So. And it's not just a history lesson. Like, here's all the names that you have to memorize before Ugh. next week. Right. You know, it's Ugh. God is communicating theology to us in a beautiful, yeah. grand way. So I, it, such, such a life-changing event to, to be part of Big Idea Preaching. Yeah. Amen. So uh, two more questions. One, who is your favorite personality on the Crosstalk podcast and why is it Vicky? <laughs> Wow. Well, Vicky is great, but I'm going to have to say Kent because I work directly for him. So I, <laughs> he's my boss and uh, I spend the most time listening to his voice. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> and uh, more, more seriously, so how, how can people join us in the work God is doing through Crosstalk Global? What are ways that people can get involved? Yeah. I would say the most obvious and important way that people can get involved is by praying. You know, it, it's one of those standard things. You say, oh, pray for me, pray for me. But literally, I mean, we're going into places around the world where there is spiritual oppression right on the forefront. You know, I think about my time in India and one of the times I was there, there were riots, um, mm. you know, against religious minorities just down the street. As I'm teaching, I can hear these riots coming closer and closer. And, you know, just the importance of being able to communicate what God is doing in his word and to share that and allow that to multiply. It's not just an academic event. You know, it really is something that we need soaked in prayer. And so easy way to get involved. Pray for us as we're going out. Pray for the pastors who are there. Um, Another way people can get involved is to give. I mean, as much as uh, we'd like to say that we can, we do charge tuition uh, from students, but we know that that's not going to cover uh, the costs of what it costs to do crosstalk. I mean, our goal is to give right. away the education that has cost us so much here in the States. Um, and so being able to give towards those projects is a huge, huge way to, um, to make sure that our, our ministry keeps going. Um, but for those who um, who really want to get involved, joining a cohort would be an excellent way to do so. Um, we've got uh, cohorts that are here in the United States, one at the moment, but that one's going to be coming to an end here next year and going to multiply into two and, and so on and so forth. So if they really want to get the crosstalk experience, join up, come see live and in living color what it's all about. And, and who knows what God may do with you from there. Yeah, and and what education level do they have to have to join a cohort? Well, if the uh, pastors in the mountain regions of Vietnam can join up and succeed in the crosstalk, anyone can. You know, uh, people around the world come to us with all levels of education, and that means so little to the final outcome. Anyone can do it with yeah. the help of the Holy Spirit. All of us can properly understand and communicate God's ideas. So. Don't let education be a factor. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the beautiful things is we have high quality education and someone with a doctorate can grow in this cohort mm -hmm. and someone who has you know, a middle school a diploma can also yep. grow and and grasp all of these skills and then turn around and effectively communicate God's word. It's it's, it's a beautiful, incredible thing to see. I'm also going to yeah. say, you know, you, you mentioned giving financially, which the the link to give directly is in the show notes every week, guys. So Great. just <laughs> click on this and then click on give. You can always do that. But uh, this is probably going to drive Kent nuts, right? We certainly okay. need big donors, right? If you if you feel like, man, I want to I want to invest in the future. I want to store my treasures in heaven. I mean, invest heavily with crosstalk. The return on investment is incredible. And, and we're able to do and educate so many people for, uh, for pennies on the dollar of what other organizations can do. But yeah. we also need a lot of people giving a little bit, right? So if you're here and you're listening to this, you're like, eh, try to give $5 a month, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if, we, if we've got a thousand people to give $5 a month, that would multiply and grow. And so we certainly need both. We need big donors and we need small ones. And, and as you see God's ministry growing and, uh, and uh, and your finances change or shift or your priorities shift, you, you can give a little more over time, right? And grow that. But uh, but even if you start small, every bit helps and every bit multiplies to grow the kingdom of God. If, in fact, if the listeners of this podcast all you know chipped in five dollars a month, we would uh, we'd certainly have an incredible fi financial footing uh, yeah. to go forward and to be able to equip others so other the yeah. other cultures can hear God's voice. 
Absolutely. So Alan, any final words about your work with Crosstalk, Crosstalk Global? Well, I love what I do. I love the ability to work with people all around the world to hear the God stories of how he's changing them, changing their lives, lives of their congregation. And the, whatever skills I can bring in, whatever piece I can add to the puzzle is just such an exciting thing to be part of. So I'm grateful for that opportunity and look forward to what God has next for Crosstalk. A big thank you to Dr. Alan Miller for taking the time to just share with us a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes and the groundwork that he and others have laid to make Crosstalk Global a success and to continue to equip biblical communicators all around the world so everyone and every culture can hear God's voice. The Crosstalk Podcast is a production of Crosstalk Global, equipping biblical communicators so every culture hears God's voice. To find out more about this educational nonprofit organization, please visit www.crosstalkglobal.com. You can also support this show by rating it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find it. Be sure to listen next Friday as we rejoin our discussion of the book of Acts and discover how to go deeper in our relationship with God. You won't want to miss it.